OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to try and find the range of this function, so the set of all possible outputs. And we'll start by actually focusing on the values of theta, the inputs for which this function is going to be well defined. Because, for example, tan theta isn't actually well defined for all values of theta. So we need to first of all work out which values of theta we can put into this function. So for tan theta, we can just draw a graph and we know that it has asymptotes at pi over 2 or at minus pi over 2, and these repeat every pi units as we go along. So this tells us that tan theta at these asymptotes it's not well defined, so we have to exclude certain values of theta. And we can write this by saying that theta can't be equal to pi over 2 plus any integer multiple of pi. So this integer value k here could actually be negative as well to get us our minus pi over 2, minus 3 pi over 2, etc. So we have to exclude these values in order for tan theta to be well defined here. And similarly for cot theta, we get slightly different values of theta which aren't going to give us a well defined function. So first of all, we have an asymptote at pi, we have one at 0, we have one at negative pi, so it's similar to tan but all just shifted along slightly. So this means we also have to exclude theta can't be equal to any integer multiple of pi here, where again of integer k could be negative. And the only other problem we could run into with this function is actually what if the denominator was equal to zero? So we would need to have one plus cot theta that isn't allowed to be equal to zero. So we're saying that cot theta can't be equal to negative one. And remembering that tan theta is the reciprocal of cot theta, we can just express this then as saying that tan theta also can't be equal to negative 1 in order for the reciprocal not to be equal to 0. So these are all of our different values of theta which would cause a problem where the function wouldn't necessarily be well defined. And now that we've got these, we can start trying to work out what are the possible outputs so that we can find the range of this function. And to make this next step a bit easier for ourselves, we'll actually replace our tan theta and cot theta by a new variable, which we'll call x. So if we say that x is equal to tan theta, so we've got tan theta is equal to x, then we'll just have a think about which values x is allowed to take here. So these first restrictions that theta can't be pi over 2 plus some integer multiple of pi, this was just so that tan theta could be well defined. So this doesn't actually give us any restrictions on x so far. But these values of theta where it's equal to a multiple of pi, this is telling us effectively that tan theta can't be equal to zero because then cot theta wouldn't be well defined. So x can't be equal to zero. We've also got this added restriction that x or tan theta cannot be equal to negative one either because then the denominator here will be zero and the expression wouldn't be well defined. So now we can write our whole function just in terms of x then. We've got f of theta replacing tan theta by x can be written as 1 minus x, and then in the denominator, using the fact that cot is the reciprocal of tan, we can write this as 1 over x, like that. And then we can multiply the numerator and denominator by x to get a slightly nicer expression. We get x minus x squared over x plus 1, and this step is fine because we already know that x can't be equal to 0, so we can multiply the numerator and denominator both by x there. And at this point, it could be tempting to maybe use calculus, find the maximum and minimum of this function as a function of x. But we'll actually take a slightly different approach, where we can express this as a quadratic equation, and we'll use the discriminant approach. So we're effectively looking for, to find the range of this function, we're trying to find all the values that this can be equal to. So if we say that this is equal to some value t, then let's try and solve this equation, find a value of x so that this does have a solution equal to t. So then we can multiply on both sides by our x plus 1, so we get t times x and plus t times 1, and this is just equal to x minus x squared. Then taking all of our terms over onto the right-hand side, we get x squared, we've got a tx minus x, so it's plus t minus 1 times x, and finally just plus t, our constant term there. So now we can think about this in terms of the discriminant, so we're trying to find where are there going to be values of x so that this expression is equal to t? Well, this is exactly when our discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is non-negative. So our b would be our coefficient of x, our a is just 1 there, and you can see our c is equal to t. So we can formulate this then as saying the values of t for which we have solutions are where b squared or t minus 1 all squared minus 4 times 1 times t, so minus 4t 
are greater than or equal to zero. And then we can expand this and simplify. This is going to be t squared minus 6t plus 1 is greater than or equal to zero. So the values of t for which the discriminant is non-negative are exactly the values of t for which we have a solution to this equation. And this equation is just telling us then the values of t which satisfy this equation for which we can make this work, these are going to be the values of t which are in our range. So if we can solve this equation, this inequality now, this will tell us what our range ought to be. And now to solve this inequality, we can first of all look for values of t where this quadratic is equal to zero. So if we solve t squared minus 6t plus 1 equals zero, for example using the quadratic formula, we'll get t is equal to 3 plus or minus 2 root 2. And then we can sketch what this quadratic actually looks like as t varies. You get 3 minus 2 root 2, 3 plus 2 root 2, and it's going to be this shape of quadratic. So you can see then that the quadratic is going to be positive, first of all, when t is less than or equal to 3 minus 2 root 2, and secondly, where t is greater than or equal to 3 plus 2 root 2. So we get these two different parts of values of t where this can be positive. So this should be telling us then what the range of our function should be. But we just need to check very carefully because we had all of these values where x can't be equal to 0 or it can't be equal to negative 1. We'll just make sure this hasn't given us any extra values of t which we shouldn't be allowed so that our original function wouldn't actually be well defined. So we first of all look at what would happen if x was equal to 0. So we had x equals 0. Let's look at what this would do to our quadratic down here. You'd have 0 equals just 0, 0, and t. So this would give us t equals 0. So 0 is actually in our range as far as we're concerned here. But you can see that when x is 0, this gives rise to t equals 0 in our range. But this isn't actually allowed because then tan theta would be 0 and cot theta wouldn't be well defined. But fortunately there's a way of getting around this. So one argument would be you could actually take limits as x or as tan theta goes to zero and you could argue that this function would, its limit would indeed be equal to zero, so perhaps this is allowed. But even better we could actually just substitute in what if tan theta was equal to one? So if tan theta equals one then we've got one minus one over one plus one in our original function which gives us 0 divided by 2. So this does give us 0 in our range using a slightly different value of x or a slightly different value of tan theta equivalently. So then this is telling us then that even though when x is 0, t equals 0 doesn't really work, we can get t equals 0 for a different value of x. So t equals 0 should indeed be in the range of our function. So what about when x is negative 1? Well, if we had x equals negative 1, let's just look at what this would do for our quadratic that we've just solved. We'd get 0 equals 1, negative 1 squared, and then instead of plus t minus 1 times x, this is just minus t minus 1 in brackets, and finally plus t. So the negative t and the plus t would cancel, we'd actually get 0 equals 2, which is going to be a contradiction there. So this is telling us then that actually x equals negative 1 can never be a solution to a quadratic of this form, 0 equals x squared plus t minus 1 times x plus t. So this is telling us then that x equals negative 1 doesn't give rise to any of our values of t which we were using to find our range there. So this doesn't cause us any problems. So x is 0, we can get around this spurious value of t just by using tan theta equals 1, or x equals 1 gives us t equals 0 by another means, and x equals negative 1 doesn't even cause us any problems. So then we can conclude that our range is going to be all of these different values of t then. So we'll write this just using set notation as the inequality going from negative infinity up to 3 minus 2 root 2, when we include the 3 minus 2 root 2, the union of this and the inequality, everything bigger than or equal to 3 plus 2 root 2, going all the way up to infinity there. So that is the range of our function.